Okay, so it's been a while since I've done a film review. Before I get into this, just very briefly, that gives away what today is, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Sláinte to all my Irish viewers and uh, any Irish viewers who may be watching around the world. Have a good one. Um, so, this film review, uh, T2 Train Spotting. A um, few things I need to say, first of all. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail about the synopsis. I'm going to give an outline, basically. I'm going to um, also give a brief rundown for anyone who isn't familiar with the first film. But also part of this will be, um, you know, perhaps more of the for the understanding of those who have already seen the first film. So try, try and uh, organise it that way. Um, I actually had a lucky experience in a sense. I come back from Scotland yesterday, um, from Dumfries to Newcastle, Newcastle to Sunderland. And um, I I really wanted to see this film. Just felt like it at this time, uh, having been to Scotland and sort of just, I was in the mood for seeing it and it felt right. And I thought, oh, I've missed it. It's definitely because it had been in my local cinema for some time. Well, it turned out uh, hit a bit of luck because the usual price on a Thursday is £8. But being the last showing, it was only £4, which is usually the price on a Tuesday. Anyway, I did miss the first 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, which was, you know, not ideal. But I got to see the film. And I'm very pleased that I did. It had me same energy the same vibe as the first film i i thought it was very well done so a little bit of background um to anyone who is not remotely familiar with this you may be stumbling across this video you may have heard it basically train spotting the first thing it has nothing to do with trains when i first saw this um when i first saw the first film um the first film was released in 1996 i was too young at the time i was only 11 so I was way too young to see it myself. I think I first saw it around, maybe sometime around the mid 2000s, thereabouts, uh, on video. And I, I thought it was amazing. I, I really thought it was a very powerful film at what it done. There had been another uh, well known drugs film, uh, if I could put it that way, in the late 90s, Human Traffic. I also thought Human Traffic was good, although it's often been seen as, you know, Compared on favourably to train spotting, I think they're both good in their own way. Train spotting is set in Edinburgh, human traffic is set in Cardiff. Train spotting is about real hard class A drugs like heroin and so on, whereas um, specifically heroin, whereas uh, human traffic is about ecstasy and the whole clubbing scene, amphetamines, that sort of thing. Um, so basically. And I only found this out recently. Train spotting is actually set in the 1980s. It was made in 1996, based on the Irvine Welsh novel of the same name, but it's set in the 1980s. And it's sort of looking at a Thatcherite Britain. Um, Irvine Welsh is quite a political figure. He um, He's pretty left-wing, and uh, I think it's fair to say his politics are well to the left. Um, he's also a Scottish nationalist uh which is, you know, not exactly my politics, to say the least. But I'll give him his due. He's good at what he does. Um, and the thing about train spotting is it's uh, it's this look into a life of Edinburgh that not everyone really thinks about. Um, in fact, Edinburgh has just as many rough spots as Glasgow. Sometimes because Edinburgh is such a touristy city, there's this kind of stereotype we think of, I don't know, guess shortbread and kilts and tartan. And uh, there's kind of this cheery, touristy Edinburgh. And that is there for sure. But there is another side of Edinburgh. And it's um, the thing is, in Britain, Glasgow is always seen as a big, rough city. And uh, what train spotting done, in a sense, is put Edinburgh on the map for something other than. Um, you know, the nice tourist image of Scotland. Um, that was very interesting. I mean, Edinburgh is one of the most filmed cities in Britain, I'd say, outside London, Liverpool, Edinburgh, or, and Glasgow are among the most sort of filmed cities. Um, 
but Edinburgh is very important. It's very integral to the story because a lot of the dialects are used, a lot of the cultural aspects are brought up in the, in the film and in the book. I haven't read the book, I have to say, but from what I understand, it is quite loyal. Uh, the film is quite loyal to the book. Um, so both films were directed by Danny Boyle. Um, I'm going to focus more on the second film because that is what the review is about, but it is necessary, I guess, to discuss a little bit about the first one. So basically it's about four young drug addicts, uh, well, three young drug, drug addicts and a slightly older associate who's just a violent thug, basically. Um, and it isn't a preachy film in the sense it doesn't say, don't do drugs, kids, drugs are bad. It's more coming from their point of view, and that's what makes it so interesting. Um, there's some very famous scenes in the first film. The character Mark Renton, played by Ewan McGregor, who's one of Scotland's best-known actors, indeed one of Britain's best-known actors, uh, famously coming out of the toilet bowl. It, it's it's not an easy-going film. There are scenes that are hard to watch because of the subject matter. One particularly disturbing scene in the first film is when um, the character Sick Boy, uh, they are so gone out on um, drugs that they abandon, uh, he abandons his young baby daughter and she dies. And um, that, that just messes them up completely uh, because the character Mark Renton then gets these images of a baby climbing across the roof and its head turning. And I think the influence that Train Spotting had on British culture was immense. Um, it was a very powerful film in that sense because it, it tapped into... Um, as as Robert Carlyle said, it tapped into that whole culture in the late nineties. New Labour was coming in, and British films were really becoming a big thing at the time. Um, actually, I would argue the nineties was a great time for British films. Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, there was a lot of big British films at the time, but those uh, four central characters are played by Ewan McGregor, Johnny V. Miller, who's actually English, but plays a great Scott, in my opinion, Ewan Bremner um, and Robert Carlyle. Ewan Bremner, for any film buffs, if you look at the film Naked with David Furless, um, Furless, if it's pronounced, yeah, of Harry Potter fame, he was in a film called Naked, a drama about a rapist. Ewan Bremner makes a very brief appearance in that. Um, Robert Carlyle, of course, very well-established actor, the film Monty. He often gets dark roles. Well, so these three characters, uh, Renton, Sick Boy, and Spud, are kind of drug addicts. Uh, if there is a main character, it would probably be Renton. He is, because his voiceover, uh, you can hear at the start, choose life, choose a fucking big television, choose DIY. And uh, and it's this whole lineup of, it's sort of almost satirical. It's almost, uh, that's my perception of it. It's almost mocking modern life in a sense. And it's not a justification of drug use, but I guess it's it's saying that this is escape from the modern world. That's my interpretation of it. I might be wrong. Um, so basically, in the last film, it, it finishes up with this character Rent and taking the money that they kind of accumulated together. So in a sense, he betrays his friends. And it kind of finishes off. He felt sorry for Spud because he never hurt anyone. So Spud is sort of the innocent character, the, the character you kind of feel sorry for. Now, there's a lot of the characters in the first film coming to the second. In the first film, there's a teenage girl um, who, played by Kelly MacDonald, and Renton has a relationship with her without realising her age, and he's very on edge about that. Now, in the second film, bear in mind 2017, it's in real time, so we're talking 21 years later. They're all now in the 40s. Um, in the case of Spud, not much has changed. Still a heroin addict, but he's a polar opposite of the character of Bigby. Spud is good natured, but fragile. Um, Bigby himself is not a drug user. This is a character played by Robert Carlyle, but he is a violent thug and uh, a bit of a, a psychopath. And in this, uh, in this second part, basically he's been released from prison after serving uh, a considerable time for his various violent antics. Um, 
and basically he is hell bent on revenge on Renton because he sees Renton as betraying him. Um, Sick Boy also sees Renton as betraying him, but they have a friendship going way back. Now, this second film is based on the novel Porno, um, and the whole idea of that is that Sick Boy and Renton want to open up this uh, this strip joint, basically, but they need permission from Hollywood, so they, they masquerade it as being a cultural thing. Uh, because obviously they're not going to get uh, money from the Scottish Parliament to do, you know, a porno. Um, there's another character who I would argue is really the fifth character in this. Um, she's pretty important. Um, she There's no Wikipedia article on her, but if I just get her name up. Um, Angela Nedjelkova as Veronica. She plays the Bulgarian girlfriend. Um, of well, girlfriend in uh, in loose terms of sick boy, and um, she plays a pretty important role in this. I would argue as important as Kelly McDonald in the first film. Um, and basically, she she plays this kind of same role. She's not a drug user herself, but she's kind of in. I think she is supposed to show the human side because these four guys, three of them are have drug problems, one of them's a psychopath. I think she's meant to show the kind of connection to human society, something like that. Um, interestingly, uh, the character played by Kelly MacDonald, like I say, she was a teenager in the first film, she's now a lawyer. In this one, it's kind of cruel irony that she's having to bail Renton out. Um, Diane, her character's name is. Irvine Welsh himself makes a brief appearance as Mickey Forrester, who's kind of a dodgy gangster type figure. Um, if you see the film, he's a bald-headed guy in his mid-50s. Um, there's one scene where Robert Carlyle's character gets his teenage son to go along to a burglary, and he's a real scumbag because his teenage son actually wants to be a good person. He wants to settle down and study, and his scumbag father's trying to bring him into this life of crime. But to me, that shows how good a, an actor Robert Carlyle is. You know, an actor that can, that can make you feel, oh, I hope this piece of shit gets his comeuppance. Uh, there's an interesting scene at the end now, a bit of a spoiler here. He actually goes back to the house and you think he's going to like beat up his wife and teenage son or something like that. But he actually, I don't know if he apologises, but he actually says well done to his son for doing well and to be a better man than him. So it's a very interesting film. There's a lot of flashbacks, but not done in a way that ruins the traction of the film. I find some films that go into flashbacks can ruin the traction because it's just constantly hopping back and forth. With this, Danny Boyle is a genius director. I believe he's, I believe he is the greatest living British director. Um, it's, it doesn't ruin the traction of the film. It's a very brief, glimmering flashbacks to the first film. It's really well done, very nostalgic. Um, and all round, uh, I would say it's worth checking out. It's, you know, if you're a sensitive person, it's not the sort of film you want to watch. It is heavy going in certain scenes, um, as you would expect. But there's also funny scenes. Um, I think Scots humour and Irish humour have some similarities in the sense that there's a, a dark humour there, gallows humour almost. Um, Train spotting very much taps into that. So I'll round it up there. There is one last thing I want to just uh, point out. Being from Northern Ireland, I find this very interesting. There's one scene where uh, Renton and Sick Boy are, the, you know, they're, they're common thieves, basically. And they go into this kind of lodge, uh, this kind of out-of-town pub, and it's full of um, unionists. Now, whether they're Ulster unionists or Scottish unionists, uh, I'm not sure, but certainly uh, you get the impression they're Ulster unionist type people because... There's a big portrait of King Billy. There's portraits of the Queen all over the place. Really, you know, um, rural Britannia sort of place. And Irvine Welsh coming from his politics, obviously, you know, you can see where this is going. So they, they end up, you know, just stealing all the credit cards and all. And, but then the doorman stops and says, all right, lads, you're going to give us a song. And uh, it's a really funny scene, actually. Uh, so Renton has to get up and he's shitting himself in all these hard prods standing there expecting something and thinking who the fuck are these guys and then suddenly he, he makes up the song about the battle of the boing 
and it's a really ultra sectarian song. And then there were all the Catholics were dead, and then they start, you know, getting really into it. I think it's Irvine Welsh's way of taking the piss out of uh, unionists. But I have to admit, it is a very funny scene. It's just well done. Um, they end up, you know, escaping with their lives. Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Um, and that's it. So summed up, I would say this film is well worth watching. Um, it's, a, it's a very funny finale because, uh, you know, you see a lot of allusions to the first film. But what I would say is don't assume that it's more slow paced because the actors are now older. They're in their 40s. If anything, this has even more energy than the first film. Um, I think it's well done and it's uh, I'm very pleased to watch it. Um, I don't particularly agree with all of Irvine Welsh's politics. Um, and I, I actually hate drugs myself. That's, but don't think of it so much as a drugs film. It is that, but don't think of it so much as that. Think of it also as a cultural film because it is just as much that. It's had a huge influence on modern Scottish culture and I would argue modern United Kingdom culture. Excuse me. These things have been slipping off all day. So check it out. T2 train spotting. Um, if you haven't seen the first film and you have access to it, I would recommend the first film first. It's not absolutely necessary to see it, but it helps. Um, thanks for watching. Check it out. And like the first film, great soundtrack.